Oh, it's back, it's back. Shit, kill it, kill it. Oh my god, I think it's stuck under your shoe, man. Welcome to another episode of Food Finders. Today we are gonna explore Coven. We have a new guest host with us, Aaron. Hello guys, I'm just a food content writer for the past maybe five months. Before that, I used to be a chef at the hotel for the past 14 years. That's why we hired him. I used to study in Aokang area also, more than 10 years ago. Would be great to revisit Coven area. Definitely. Why are you acting so nervous? Let's go. Right, so we are now at one of the most ulu shopping centers. We are here to find newly opened barbecue. Korean barbecue. Nen -nen Nen -nen Korean barbecue. Hey, okay, we found it. Yeah, it actually feels more Japanese than Korean. Nen Nen Contemporary Barbecue typically only opens in the evening because we wanted to feature them. So we actually prearranged with them because this is one of the very hidden places. La. Like, if I don't tell you this exists, you will know, man. No. Let's go and try it. I think interestingly, we asked the owner like why they selected this location. He mentioned that he grew up in the area like they, they kind of like this very cozy space. So we're just gonna wait for the food to be prepared. Many transitions. We have sides like edamame, kimchi, and I think marinated Japanese cucumber, pork belly, pork collar, chicken thigh, chicken yeah, meat wings, uh, sambal fish. So in addition, we also got the scallop. These are Japanese oysters, the foie gras. duck foie gras. Quite actually rare to see foie gras in the barbecue, right? This is a melted strip loin and the A5 okay. wagyu. While we wait for the grill to heat up, let's just try the oyster. Oyster cheers. Cheers. Salty. Eh? I like the spicy kick coming from the Thai yeah. sauce. These are Japanese oysters. Really meaty actually. So it's like six That's pieces right. for 1880. 18, 1880 on weekdays all day. So this is like a bit of a fusion-ish barbecue, I would say. So like this pork lard thing is very mukata. Yeah. There's a bit of Korean elements. There's a bit of Japanese elements with like the wagyu steaks and all. 2680 for the two-person set. So it's pretty affordable. So there's Asahi, there's Kiwi. We have Heineken and Sapporo as well. So you can pick five bottles for a grand total of 2880. <laughs> like one of everything. Okay, one of everything. Okay, so first meal of the day, we are having barbecue. It's great that we have a uh, former ex chef to barbecue the food today. You need to come with a professional grill friend, friend. who is not a chef. Let's try the saba fish. I think the ponsu really absorbs the flavor mm -hmm. of the bonito flakes very well. But the meat is good though. I like the flaky texture. I mean, this is definitely better than the packet dairy. Definitely uh, better. Saba pork yeah. belly with spicy sesame sauce. Wait, wait, wait. Is the sweetness coming from the meat or is it the sauce? Both. I think they mix a bit of the Korean gochujang sauce. It actually doesn't taste like sesame sauce. Interesting innovation. Quite like the pork so far. What else can go? Move on to the foie gras. Yeah, move on. Okay, like your favorite foie gras, go for it. I've never fancy mm. foie gras before though. Have you? So actually, I'm using an old method I'm to check the thunders of stuff. Whether the pork is hot. Yeah, I'm trying to make yeah, it like If it's still foie gras, just. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh. Mmm, very pretty, man. Oh, this is pretty good. I've had funky tasting for crab before. Yeah, this is not funky at all. Yeah, it's very good. It's good. Also, it's relatively clean, but still a lot of fat. Uh, let's go beef. And I, you know what? Let's separate it. Okay. Yep. And Jaga the Wagyu. The Wagyu very fast, right? Yeah. The fattiness is definitely there. I think it would help with a bit of sauce. It's definitely good. Mm -hmm. Probably it's good enough. Super juicy, right? Yeah, it feels fatty, but the fattiness. Oh, right, between this and like the. Yeah, the it's only really different from the wagyu. One, two, three, four point five. Oh. Yeah, I like that it's so ulu. I think uh, I think it will be empty. I have no idea. I like that no one really knows about this place. Uh, and it's quite a cozy spot. The prices are quite affordable. So the good thing here is also there is no GST and no service charge. So all prices are net. So transition back to the car. To Alice's car, cover screen. Then we will appear in car. So we're gonna drive to, to the Hawker Center. Actually, quite a few places to eat. Yeah, so over there on the left, you have there used to be Asia Teju Porridge. There's another Thai restaurant. So it's called Yawa also. Uh, I, I, okay. I tried that two weeks ago. How do you find it? It wasn't uh, really Thai. It's more Chinese. Uh. Yeah, it's uh, more to fusion. I don't know. But we're gonna check out the Hawker Center. I think there's a few things there. This one is Yuan Ting Gourmet. This is Aaron's recommendation. I only come to this hawker center for two things the two porridge things. here and the chocolate tea over there. Uh, one pizza and so roll. So. If I 
盘差不多一条四块的，这边吃对，大虾可以。八笋粿，可以叫一粒笋粿，还有那个骨髓粿。哇哇哇！哇，七个笼子啊 ！I think it's like the longest queue in Poland, yeah. 好的 ，food is here. 刚才的包括这些 ，basket. Oh, it's back, it's back. Cheat, cheat, cheat. Oh, uh, gross. Oh my god, I think it's stuck under your shoe, man. <laughs> I think first thing we should mix the porridge because there's a raw egg inside. Can we find the egg? No, oh yeah, the egg is okay, here. Okay, oh, it's very good. Still, still runny. So this is the taste that I'm familiar with. I'm always here for the porridge. So do you find it different with the raw egg? It makes the porridge more rich. I think in future, I, will, I might have raw egg with my porridge. In terms of thickness, it's not overly thick as well. Oh, so you don't like those very cow I don't porridge. like those super, super thick ones. Yeah. It's like too much rice. But then on the other end, you have the teochew mui, right? So that's like too watery also. So I think this is like a pretty okay. In terms of flavor, I would say Sin Hengki porridge at Aukang is still a bit better. But this is pretty okay also. It's not overly seasoned. Maybe just a little bit more seasoning that would be better. Personally, I would prefer if the yu tiao is still the whole piece. Yeah, yeah, the whole piece. You can just munch it and heat it together. For me, I'll give it a 3.5. Yeah, I also want to give 3.5. Well, actually, I feel like you copy my rate. I would not come all the way to Coburn, especially because I live in Bukit Batok, just to eat this porridge. Pretty decent. Let's move on. So this is Mee Pok dry with Chili. That's pork lard. Must have pork lard. The pork lard is crispy, which is good. Are you anal about your pork lard? A preference lah. I would prefer if it's a bit crispy. Not a deal breaker for me lah. I actually am more concerned with like the lard oil that's mixed inside. Ah yes. I think this one has a good amount. Like you can actually taste the the pork lardiness. Fish ball tastes quite good. So I grew up eating fish balls with chili and spring onion lah. So if I get a plain flowery tasting one, then I'm quite happy. Like that's actually fish, you know. It's not just majority flour. I think the noodles are good. Yeah. I think the lao pan cook it quite well. For bak chor mee, I like vinegar, but it cannot be too strong. So you don't like the Thai hua one? Uh? Yeah, I don't like the Thai hua. One, two, two three. Three four. Five. If there was a little bit of vinegar, then I'll give it okay. a four. But this one like almost zero vinegar. Yeah, there's no vinegar at all. I really like how the noodles were done. Actually, this is more firm, less cooked than usual mee pok. La. So I really like the texture on that. Okay, this is the... Uh, what are they? I don't know. 85 uh, fried oyster. Yeah. Let's ask Dean. Dean, what's your comment on this char kway teow? It used to be good after the wrong method of the store, right? Okay. But it's the same hawker, right? Is they the changed the owner, right? Yeah, some I will be disappointed if this chocolate was as good as before. Oh no. Dean, you're right. Chocolate is as good as before. <laughs> it's not overly cooked for the hum, so I think that's a yep. plus point. I would prefer if the chocolate was a bit more spicy though. Yeah, even with chili, this is not as spicy. Yeah, it's a pretty weak chili. But overall, super normal to me. Yeah. I'll give it a treat. There's not much wok hay and mm. the chili is not strong enough. At least the hum was fresh and still juicy. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. I think this is a treat for me. This is like super average. So here we have the Pak Sung Kui. Actually, honestly, right, before I put it in my mouth, I saw that the skin was slightly too thick. But actually, when you put it in your mouth, it's very soft and it's quite good. When you try to cut it, it's a bit hard. La. But when you put it in, yeah, it's surprisingly quite soft. Oh, yeah, okay. Eh? Okay, Ku Sai Kui. Ku Sai is a lot. Very generous with the, the veg. The Ku Sai Kui, when you normally have, does it have mm. like dried shrimp in it? Not that I know of. La. I think honestly, in my life, I only had Ku Sai Kui like three times. So my second time, they had like dried shrimp in oh, it. Oh, yeah, dried shrimp. It's pretty fragrant. So, so I like China Taiwan. Yeah, so, so I would have uh, preferred that. I think I'll give it a four. Give it a four. It's pretty okay. Yeah, I quite like it as well. Feeling ratio to the skin is quite good. So we're going to move off from the food center to another spot in Coburn. Fade out. So recently, I went to this uh, steakhouse at the Grandstand. Mm. It's called Keith the Beef. So he recommended Yeah, his wife was like saying this beef way is like one of the must tries in Coburn. Quite interesting. Actually, I've never heard of this place also. So this is going to be pretty much a walking episode again. Because a lot of places that we want to try are pretty nearby. Actually, are we here already? I think it's this coffee shop. So, 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 so. Chengki Beef Kui Tiao. Uh, can you give me the E-Hao? 
So we are at some very random coffee shop. La. Like the signage and all, is you can't really see it until you come in. The beef kway teow store that we just ordered from, it's also hidden in some freaking corner. Some corner, yeah. I think while we were here, we didn't really plan to try this Jia Song Myung Kui. So this is by Master Chef contestant Aaron. Say hi to Jen. This seems very much like the ban mian, you know, the ban mian tang lor. Usually when I have ban mian, I don't order mi hong kui because I find it too thick and flurry. There's a very strong flavor of the chai. What chai is this? Uh? It seems like spinach to me. The vegetable flavor is quite strong in the soup. Very strong in the soup for some reason. Okay, normally mi hong kui like comes very thick, so I like that. This is actually not very thick. Isn't I quite usual? like, yeah, I quite okay. like the the kui itself. I'm picking up some like slightly smoky flavors coming, but it's not a bad um, kind of smokiness. I'm just very distracted by the spinach. Hey, spinach. So I tried the. Lean meat. I really like the lean meat. Marinated, it's pretty tender. The ball is quite good. It's got like transparent base of fat. Then it's a prawn ball. Pork spices are a bit chewy. Individually, all the ingredients are actually quite good. But the soup, don't know. Is it confusing you? And something went a bit off on the soup. I mean, it doesn't taste like your typical ban mian soup, right? The rest of ban mian, typically, they do have chai, but like, you don't taste so much chai in the soup. It's like a raw kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that raw, raw vegetable, yeah, yeah, it's leafy that taste. Raw, leafy taste. Oh. But okay. I don't mind it though. But, but you like it, it lah, yeah. For me, I think I'll give it a 4. Because honestly, before I tried this stall, I didn't really hear very good reviews online about this stall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, when I actually tried it, I think it's not bad. So, one of our riders actually previously featured before, I think we gave a uh, 3. three. I would say I'm a bit closer to what our previous writer gave. I will oh. go with a 3.5. Let's move on to try main star of the show. Okay, I'm gonna try the soup first. Soup yeah, looks pretty soup. good. Oh, okay, very beefy. So nice. normally beef soup, right? Star anise flavor is quite strong. Mm. But for this, I'm not picking up any star anise taste. More beef, uh, just beef. Uh. Yeah. So this is the dry version. Comes with like the sauce and noodle. I like the added pickle. This is pickle, suan cai. Master Sour, vegetable. Uh, master vegetable. I have not had beef noodle with chin before. I mean, you only eat chin with like stingray. Yes, yeah, same. The chin is quite refreshing. Mm. Like the side sauce opens up the flavor. The chin is really good though. Okay, I'm going to try with the beef. A bit tough for me though. I was eating the, the lean meat, but I'm gonna try the tripe now. Yes. Okay. Mm. They seem to do their inner parts better than the, the meat itself. actual meat itself. The beef is a little bit too tough for my liking. Yeah, it's a little workout in your mouth. I quite like this, it's just it's really just the, the meat. The meat. If they can just fix that right, like this would be a great dish. I would give it a four. The inners are fine though. Like I think the internal organs like they did it pretty well. This is a damn good soup. The braised sauce has the mustard vegetables to give it a punch. So I really like this combi la. For me I'll give it a four star as well. And we're gonna move off to the next spot. Walking away. Okay, so we're gonna go to this place called uh, Breakfast Every Day. Breakfast Every Day? Breakfast. Is breakfast, it bre breakfast, breakfast. Is it bread? Oh god! So it's really called Breakfast Every Day. It's not day. breakfast, it's breakfast. Breakfast. Yeah. What's up? Signature here. Chicken color on waffle. Chicken color on waffle. So this is what we ordered, chicken cutlet with waffle and the rosti with one sausage. They mentioned the scrambled eggs are unseasoned. So, so you need to add your own salt and pepper. Why don't you just try it before the seasoning for? The consistency is quite good. Quite good. Pretty decent scrambled eggs. So they definitely added some butter. I'm still not a fan of adding my own salt. I feel like if I have to salt it, like something's wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna try the waffle. Okay. 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 The texture is good, it's quite airy inside. I like the seasoning. Time of rosemary on it. I think it goes really well with the water. Yeah. You like know certain seasoning. places where you eat the chicken cutlet, right? You only get a taste on the skin, but not in the meat itself. This one, marination has really you try to according to the meat. The herbs really come out a lot more. It goes really well with the waffle. So I like it that nowadays you have more options to have rosti. Because in the past, I think we only used to go to one place for yeah. rosti, right? This one, if I'm not wrong, he was making it from so normally for us, when we did rosti in the past, we would like just use a grater and then just grate the potato. Yeah. Grate it in a bowl of water. Then how, how do you get the potato pizza to like stick together? Because I think it's naturally starchy. When you like press it on the hot griddle, then it will naturally uh, stick to each other. In some yeah. places, if they want to make it like more sticky, they'll add like some flour or starch. So I like it that it's moist inside, slightly crispy and thin on the outside. But if you notice, if you put it in your mouth, it will just disintegrate. It's a nice colour, yeah, a bit chow ta chow ta like. It's a smoky, the smoky flavour. Yeah, this is really good. I will give this a 4. It looks like somewhere I will come for breakfast at you. Yeah, I'll just give it a 4. Yeah, like what you said, the waffle can be crispier. I think for a coffee shop waffle, this is really good. Like. But you're sticking it to a 4. Okay, like 4.5. <laughs> But I think they've done a pretty good job in the everything. The creaminess of the scrambled egg, because it has a very yep, good yep. buttery flavour. They're just going to walk down the road to another nearby store. Ooh, ooh. Mm. They're just going to walk 
take a short walk to Yara Tai Kui Cha. Let's go check it out. Let's go. Okay, so the food is here. Let's try the milk tea. I really like mine, it's like very cut. Mine has like a slight bitterness at the end. We ordered the kuei chap. They make their own kuei chap. So it's this little coney shape. The kuei chap is flat. So it's like, you know, the certificate when you graduate from Yeah, thank you. <laughs> the taste of the sausage is quite intense there. It's a good sausage. It's like a Taiwan sausage. It's like a bit sweet. Eh. Okay, the soup reminds me of... Uh, okay, I got one auntie that cooks. Soto kind of soup, quite peppery. Yeah. Very peppery. It's quite springy, right? The kuei. Yeah, I mean it's firmer than our usual kuei chap. Yeah, so I, I tried it in Bangkok before. I'll say here is the closest taste that I've tried. Yeah, this, this is the most authentic. Right? You try the roast pork. Although it's submerged in soup, right? Skin is still quite crispy. But I'd rather have the fresh roast pork here. So it's just still crispy. Yeah. Did not expect the roast pork, even though submerged in the soup, to still have that crispy skin. Ah, wow, mm. eh, then crispy, yeah? This is damn good, Sio I think they got like the fat. Sorry to say, but in fact, it's nice. this a lot better than a lot of better than a lot of shop places that sell Chinese yeah. Sioba. I think I'll just give it a 5. Yeah, I think I'll just give it a 5 as well. So you'll give it a 5? Yeah. The skin is very good. It's very hard to get such crispy mm. skin, but yet the meat is nice and moist. The simplicity of everything is just, it's it's I think fancy, it's really just yeah. like roast pork. Authenticness of the soup, this is like the closest I've had in Singapore. And it also got very good Thai milk tea. And the Thai milk tea is good. Try to think of something okay. bad, but I can't. We've come to the end of this COVID episode and we're gonna go find somewhere to collect our thoughts. So let's go. Okay, so we finished our first food finders with Aaron. I'm feeling in a state of food coma right now. I think okay. the Sun Kui and the Ku Shai Kui was quite good and very cheap. One dollar. One dollar? Kova Hawker Centre, I think generally the food is actually very affordable. So I'm very surprised like, you know, for years they have actually not increased the price of a lot of dishes. I think more importantly also the yeah. food is still very good. Probably the first place we went to. So the contemporary BBQ, quite good potential to go to at night in a Ulu area. If there's any other recommendations, please leave a comment and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to our channel and if you like Aaron please give a shout out to Aaron Joyce in China now actually so we're gonna miss Joy for a while this is uh, illegal and uh, see you guys next time on Food Finders bye bye <laughs> no one in Italy use spoon